show intro about 10 seconds. You know, there's a lot of fatigue around the country about Trump, you know. Um, we've heard enough about him. He occupies the first 20 articles of every newspaper, assuming there are still newspapers. Um, and, you know, he tries to get on the radar everywhere, in every way, no matter what. And, uh, you know, that, that fatigue gets people to turn off. They say, you know, I'll watch anything. I'll watch I Love Lucy. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more of this anymore. <laughs> But we persist, we prevail, we continue here at Trump Week because we know how important this conversation is. Right, Tim Apicella? Absolutely, Jay. And I love Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Cynthia Sinclair? I think it's hard sometimes for me to watch, and especially to watch maybe Fox News or even just the regular CBS and NBC channels as opposed to the political channels because they spend too much time sort of saying what he's doing right and i think but they don't balance it with what's not right and what's he been doing this week tim well i think Ooh. the big news story in my mind obviously was his trip to europe but the unexpected announcement about a mexican tariff of a graduating scale from five percent all the way to 25 percent which is not related to trade but related to um his perception of um unlawful immigration into the country did it's you it's see a political oh. grandstand, isn't it? It's a huge political grandstand. Yeah, playing for his base, um, playing to show what a big guy he is. It has nothing to do with uh, the economy or, or global trade or, or our relations with Mexico. Just pushing people around to show what a big guy he is. Well, go ahead. Well, one of the things that I saw in that whole deal that's being you know, put together, one of the things is that U.S. can deport people. And I think... How does that have anything to do with Mexico? But that's part of the, the agreement. Of course, I couldn't get an answer. I, I looked around. I tried to read it, find an article that would tell me. But that's part of what he wants in the deal. And I don't understand it. Well, that's American law. That's not Mexican. They can't do anything. Why else. does that have to do anything with <clears throat> right. the deal? Well, let me, uh, I misstated the title on that one point. Um, I said Mex Mexican tariff. It's not a tariff. It's a tax. Mm -hmm. And until we start using that terminology, um, the American public, particularly those, those citizens in red states that are going to be directly impacted by this, are going to feel the impact of a tax, not a tariff. Yeah. I don't know why Mexico plays right. with him. You know, they're actually in talks um, with somebody in the administration about right. uh, trying, to, trying to stem the, the tide. And they made some kind of deal about Nicaragua, I think. Uh, Guatemala, sorry. Okay. Uh, and the Guatemalans would go, mm, they, would, they would allow the Guatemalans to stay in Mexico, give them, give them residence or something. And then others from other countries in that region, they would go to Guatemala. I don't know well, how that works, but uh, that's really strange. And, and so, th in effect, they're doing something to respond to him. Well, the other one was um, the potential commitment of 6,000 border, Mexican border right. patrol to uh, be, a, to be a dispatched. To the border areas. The southern border. Right. Right. Yeah. And in terms of borders, let me shift a little bit. You know, he's got the army painting one mile of fence because he said it didn't look good. So, you know, is this nutcake? Wait, we'll go, we'll go to nutcakes later. Okay. <laughs> so now, now on a parallel track, we have China. We have, you know, he, uh, what I saw in the paper, he's going to do uh, another raise in tariffs right now mm -hmm. another one another one on china 300 billion now remember yeah. the other one was i believe 200 billion yeah. and he said we could do this this is easy i yeah. mean 300 billion now is subject to 25 percent tax unbelievable it reminds me of when he fired somebody on the apprentice you you sat there watching that show why did he fire that guy there was no rhyme or reason about it why is he doing this additional tariff? There's no rhyme or reason about it. He's already getting all this pushback from American industry. Because as you said, Tim, it's a tax on mm -hmm. us. We pay right. it. It disrupts world trade, disrupts their economy and our economy. And I, I don't know what the purpose is, but he keeps on doing it. Did he do something wrong that he wants to do another, what, $300 billion? What's the problem with him? Keeps ratcheting it up. Again, how many shows have we said, is this just another way of distraction? But this tax could potentially talk, 
or cost $900 per American citizen. And we're talking about potentially 200,000 jobs in the state of Arizona, because Arizona actually will be the greatest state impacted by this act um, if it goes through. Uh, when I, I go through. It's he, he does it all this, you know, by fiat. He does it himself. Well, okay, so he's, again, <laughs> he's taking on to himself the power of taxation. And, and finally, in the Senate, we have a number of senators, Republican, who said, hey, this is not what we like or want. So they're finally, some of them are raising their head and saying, stop it. Uh, we have Ted Cruz saying this is going to be very harmful impact. We have John uh, Cornyn from Texas saying we're headed to, uh, it's like holding a gun to our heads. We have um, John, our own heads. Joni Ernst right. saying it's over, overwhelmingly we oppose these tariffs and they will count to answer on everything. And then last but not least, even Mitch McConnell, our Mitch McConnell here, he said that this is, there's not much support for this and um, they, want to, they want to sit down with the president before Monday because that's when the first 5% is going into play. Remember, Mitch McConnell is the guy who's married to a Chinese uh, woman who's well-connected in China. Uh, don't forget that. And don't forget that for his birthday, Mitch McConnell got a multi-million dollar gift, okay, from the family. So <clears throat> Mitch McConnell wow. is not without certain hmm, suggestions of corruption on such things. Right. Uh, and then the, the automobile industry in, in, in the oh. U.S., you know, is saying, you're going to wreck our industry and the economy. Don't do this. But he persists. It's like throwing everything on the wall and seeing what happens. There's no plan. It's what you wake up with in the morning. It's bizarre. Yes. And, and, okay, but let's turn to what happened in Europe because somehow <clears throat> that has to be factored in to all this other stuff. What happened in Europe? A complete. Well, on one hand, he got through it. And he, he was even praised for following his teleprompter. If that's the bar that's been set for this president of the United Don't States. Don't use the word bar on this show. I, if that's the, <laughs> the level of competence that has been established for this president of the United States, right. we're all in big trouble because yeah. hooray for President Trump. He read the uh, teleprompter and he didn't go off script. I mean, is that what we've for come to? For a while. For a while. So he, he received um, you know, praise for his uh, Normandy um, speech. Um, but really what happened just before that was the interview with uh, Laura Ingram on Fox News Station. What, what a background was the, the headstones of all these 4,414 uh, brave soldiers that, you know, sacrificed their life. And their grave markers are right in the backdrop of this interview where he decided to take this moment 15 minutes before the actual ceremony began. Right. Uh, to basically lambaste Nancy Pelosi and Robert Mueller and uh, Chuck Schumer and the whole, the whole gang. Well, it wasn't just 15 minutes beforehand. He ended up having the whole entire ceremony late by 15 minutes mm. because yeah, he sat big, there yeah, that's a and did that interview. <clears throat> ah. I was telling you guys before the show that um, a few years ago, my wife and I uh, went to Normandy. We went to the American yeah. Cemetery at Normandy. And it is one of the most powerful, memorable experiences that we have ever had, I have ever had, uh, to be there, just to stand and look at it in, in the flesh, in the reality of it. Um, <clears throat> it brings home, you know, uh, your national connection. Uh, it brings home your sense of history and, uh, and, and morality and honesty and the greatest generation and sadness for the, the people who are buried there. It is the most powerful experience I've really ever had with respect to. Uh, an institution along those lines. And for him to abuse it, to right. defame it, deface it that way, uh, is extraordinary. What it means is he has no, he was there. He would have felt, he should have felt the same feeling, but he didn't. Uh, he doesn't understand American history. He doesn't understand the American morality, American ethics, American, the American, you know, core, core values, if he would do that. So it was particularly dis disgusting to me to see him make those uh, It, it, it statements. really did ruin the moment that he got praised for, and that was his speech. It ruined it. It completely just tarnished the entire, the right. entire speech he gave, given the backdrop and uh, the interview. It was just not, not a good moment for him, again, yeah. Uh, yeah. once again. Yeah. But this trip was different, wasn't it? Yes. Because in the past, he's gone to Europe, and he's, like, disappeared in Europe, and the, and the press reports on... On Europe, uh, they make fun of him, uh, and he's incommunicado in large part. Um, that didn't happen this time. 
He was playing for the folks back home. Oh, yeah. He had those interviews you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, and everything was calculated on what the folks back home would think. It was different this time, right? Right, the pictures at the palace, the pictures with the queen. Yeah. Look, I'm royalty. Although we have to remember that his whole family went with him, too. They don't have a place in the administration. There was a question about whether we're paying for that. Yeah. And I have an answer. We are paying for it. Are there we was not? a question about whether it was appropriate. I have an answer. It no. wasn't appropriate. I mean, this is all being a, it's a trip for him. It's a vacation. He's right. using his position in every abusive way. That's, but that's just me. Let me ask this question, because if it is, was planned, um, was it planned that he would say things that make him appear to be completely unhinged? Uh, let me use the example of the crowd size, I don't know, the crowd size of protests that he, right. A, he didn't see, and he said, he, I didn't see much of it, so therefore it didn't happen. Then you see the aerial view of the streets in London, oh. and it's packed with teaming. thousands, teeming with thousands of protesters. But he said, well, therefore, it didn't happen. Fake news must be reporting on these protests. And they were there for me because they wanted to say I was doing a great job. They were there to celebrate me, is what he said, when it was so obvious. So at what point does the media or anyone say, stop it, stop this no, this sixth grade, no. this sixth grade approach to saying my reality is the only reality. But it's, you know, the, let's take a, a, a quick digression on the media. You know, when he makes these speeches in the cemetery and insults, um, you know, anyone and everyone uh, and makes boorish remarks that affect our important relationships in NATO, um, you know, that that's really that's really bad. Uh, but, you, you know, what what I get out of that is. Uh, that he's he's slightly unhinged. Mm -hmm. um, that he is uh, he's a, he's a destroyer, but but we know that he's a boor. We know that, but but you have if you track on this, you see it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. You see the aberrational remarks getting worse, and if he thinks he's you know having a benefit, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that his base can buy that. I'm not sure that the, the Senate can buy that. And what you have is something worth looking at from a psychiatric point of view. Because, right. you know, if you, if you knew anybody or ever knew anybody who, um, you know, had some kind of mental problem like that, you know that it doesn't stay the same. It always goes somewhere. There's always a dynamic, uh, a, a sea change that it may last, it may go on for years, but it always changes. And in the end, it's never good. Uh, well, and drugs never don't necessarily help. Well, when you're a narcissist, there are no meds for narcissism. But narcissism gone unchecked like that can just, it literally, like you said, it, he gets worse and worse and worse and worse. He is power hungry. You know, power, absolute power corrupts absolutely. It, it, a narcissist in that position is just a prime candidate for that very thing of power, absolute power corrupting absolutely. Well, so the more power he gets, the more inflamed he becomes. Well, there was reports in France that he had some pretty wild mood swings. And if it wasn't for his children being there, um, who knows how bad this would have gone. So it's, maybe the reason they are there is to kind of keep a, you know, almost to, they're being his handlers. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, there are many things that contribute to what his, you know, his psychological makeup is. And I, I've said this on previous shows is that the one that we can talk about and not necessarily have to be a quali qualified psychiatrist or psychologist is the fact that he is sleep deprived and he brags about it. And he's been sleep deprived probably for the majority of his life. I don't know how the, the organic tissue of one's mind or brain can survive when, on three, or three to three and a half hours of sleep each and every day. Not at his yeah. age. Not at his age at or any age. age. Yeah, at any age. And so well, we it's know it's well documented. Amyloids, you know about amyloids and al Alzheimer's? There's been a lot of press about that lately. Right. And, and the deprivation of sleep uh, is, is one of the factors. It's a trigger. That in, right, triggers the, it, it takes you over a trigger point with the amyloid you know, content in your brain. And um, um, I think he's uh, cruising for a problem here by not sleeping. Uh, and bragging about it. But the other, the other thing I wanted to get to with you guys is it's the magician thing. You know, on the one hand, he's out there in the cemetery um, pounding on Mueller and, and uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi yeah. um, as he does. Um, and he's, you know, boasting about his thing with the Queen. And he's trying to get the press to go along with him. And, and the press is being fooled in so many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the press does go along with him. And the press you know, doesn't report as much 
on the things that he's really doing that have substantive, substantive um, you know, value. Uh, and so it's like you get two hands, one over here, watch me, everybody, and the other one is behind his back where he's appointing um, you know, right-wing judges, where he's uh, stopping stem cell research, uh, where he's doing wrecking havoc on the environment, even though he said there are arguments on both sides now. He, he's come a long way on that. Yeah, he sure he is. <laughs> but you know, I, can we cover that stuff for a minute? Because I think part of Trump week is to watch the hand behind his back. It's yeah. happening every single week, right. you know. He's just about to um, change that one regulation that allows uh, fossil fuel companies to exhaust out into the air where, you know, for years and years and years now, they've had that regulation that didn't allow them to do that kind of um, exports out. And so now they're going to be able to, which is really scary. Now, Michael Bloomberg has said 5 million, 500, 500 million. million. I knew it was a lot. $500 million that he's going to put towards completely getting rid of the oil and gas industry and our dependence on oil. Yeah, but the oil and fossil fuel industry has spent $3 billion yeah, just of, just, of just public relations in lobbying efforts. <laughs> right. So $500 million doesn't sound as much as it ought to. I know. You know, I, I think the $500 million could be better spent by trying to reform um, political action campaigns uh, peddling influence in Congress, that money could be better spent to yeah. ultimately get to curtailing the fossil fuel industry in Congress and their influence peddling in Congress. Yeah, I mean, on the one point. hand, you can see this as chaos, but on the other hand, there are a lot of organizations around profit-making organizations that, that, that fill the void, that uh, still control him and he responds to them because he thinks they're going to support him in the, uh, and maybe they are going to support right. him in, in the next election. But, you know, some other organizations, like the automobile industry, I really enjoyed this one. The automobile, you know, he's reducing the cafe standards, right? Correct. Uh, for, uh, you know, the uh, fuel emissions. And, uh, well, and the, mileage. And mileage. And mileage per gallon. Uh, right. And, and so, you know, what, what's happening is the automobile industry itself, the guys who would love not to have cafe standards, are saying, wait, this is not a good idea. Not a good idea for the automobile industry that you do this. Don't do this. These are the guys who would presumably be, be benefited by reducing, uh, you know, those standards. So, I mean, even, even they are speaking out on it. And you wonder, uh, you know, where that's going because he's doing all this stuff, including stuff that he really shouldn't be touching. Uh, and it's, it's every day. It's every way. Well, I think that's a really good point you make is remember companies, you know, five, eight years ago, they all wanted to jump on the green bandwagon. Yep. Every corporation wanted to be green. Well, at some point, some of that actually does stick into the corporate culture of, of the CEOs and the, the executives of vice presidents. They actually, you know, start to walk the talk. And I think over the last five to eight years or 10 years, I think they've done that. So I don't think it's in their best interest to just start becoming a blatant polluter. Yeah, well, you follow, you follow the leader. Leadership and the American presidency is a right. great big leader. So he's out of sync with the CEOs of this country. Yes, he is. But there are the white supremacists, he's in sync with them. Right. Yes, I, and, I would agree And we agree have an that. increasing number of uh, you know, shoot-ups in schools and other institutions who emulate him. It's, uh, they see what happens, and they, and they do it too. Uh, they want to get attention like he does, and they want to be on whatever team that is. Um, and we have a show, by the way, at 1 o'clock today involving an organization which is studying ways to notify the community there's a shooter in the school, even oh, though wow. every second counts when you have right. that experience. But, you know, I think it's monkey see, monkey do, and I think he in encourages that. And I think we are seeing the effect of the American presidency, where he creates an aura about something. And, and people everywhere in the world, New Zealand, Australia, everywhere in the world, in Europe, um, you know, where they emulate this, this ethic or non-ethic that he is putting out. And I, I don't know what we do about that. Well, I know that Prince Charles sat down with him for an extra, what, 75 minutes, I think, On was reported. Change. And that's why, because that's his thing. He, you know, is so involved in climate change and doing something about stopping sure it. had it. no effect at all. No effect at all. Obviously, because you know what? He said... I think that future generations would like good weather. Good weather. Wait, 
It didn't go from climate. It's not weather. It's not about weather. Well, he, he said there's a distinction. The weather, the weather changes. He said, yeah. you know, obviously it can't be so because they first called it global warming. Right. And then they called it climate change. And now he said, I think they now call it extreme weather. <laughs> So because there's, you know, a changing shift of definitions of, of what we're trying to go through right now and try to correct in the future, mm -hmm. he uses that opportunity to basically devalue the problem. Yeah. Right. He, yeah. he, mocks, he mocks the language, therefore, we don't have a problem. Right. And that's, that's his strategy. And it's really simple strategy. Why does it say it doesn't matter what you call it, it's occurring? Well, you know, right. but you have a guy who, uh, whose father paid off a doctor so we could have bone spurs. Right. It didn't go to the service, and then there was a discussion um, about you know his his way of making up for that by giving money to the military. I oh, thought that was incredible. That was the Pierce Morgan Pierce uh, interview Morgan, yeah. in, in London. Yeah, and it, it it was really quite amazing for him to basically bypass his his exemption from the military from Vietnam, and basically said, "Well, I'm making up for it by increasing the military budget." I didn't see the correlation. Oh, no correlation. Wait, I mean, he's taking money from the budget anyway to build his wall. So this whole of giving money to the military isn't really true either. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> there was only one um, Democratic candidate, um, Buttigieg, I can never say his name, Buttigieg. 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 He basically took great issue with it and said, yeah, yeah this, is, this is a shame. But what else is due? I mean, how many, how many episodes of shamefulness do we have to experience for us to finally say, this guy does not belong in this position. No, he, and you know, I think it, it, talking about his father and the uh, and the uh, bone spurs. Um, fact is, he doesn't have much of an education. His father got him through school, uh, and you know he doesn't know basic facts about the world, about economics, history, government. He doesn't know about it. He's just cruising through, you know, making a mess in every direction. We well, always had people that could do this stuff for him. Yeah. So yeah. he never had to actually do anything himself. You get along I love by that, arrogance. I love that Nancy said, I don't want to impeach him. I want to put him in prison. Oh, I, I thought that was horrible. I'm sorry. You thought it was horrible? Yep. It's a bad I, idea, really. It's a bad idea to say it. It drags but I us like up, that she yeah. feels she it. She lost her discipline on that yes, one. Yes, yeah. she did. And it, it drags us down to the banana republics ah, of, yes. of, you know, threatening to jail your opponents. It was bad for him. I, I understand what she was getting into is, let's have the election, then after he's out of office, then let you know, the criminal prosecutions begin. But that's not how it came out. And worse yet, I guarantee you that statement is gonna be used in 2020 oh, yeah. in the election campaign ads that you see. Yeah. And they'll yeah. use that as a shining example of how the Democratic Party wants to just go after him with no merit, but just because he's Donald Trump and they have, a, they have something against him, and they'll use that statement, I guarantee it. They're already using it. Yes. Right. When Hannity, I say they, Hannity belongs to them, uh, was making these uh, absurd statements about how it is really tacky for anybody to you know, criticize a political adversary and say she, she should go to jail. So wait a minute. Wait, wait, lock, her wait, 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 lock, lock her up. Wait, lock, lock her up. Lock her up. Come on. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm almost out of time, you guys. I can't, I can't stand this great uh, fun we have. I know. Um, so what about next week? He's going to be back. Yeah. We're going to be back in Mueller and uh, Pelosi land, or are we going to be back in, in shooting barbs at all the other uh, Democratic candidates? What are we, what's going to happen? Showdown between the Senate the Republican senators, maybe 10 or 12 of them, in a room with Donald Trump. We'll see. I think about fold. the uh, Mexican tax. I yeah, think they'll yeah. fold. I think all the senators will fold. I agree. I don't think they'll stand up to him. It's just a reality show all, every week, isn't it? Every week. And all I know is not enough people are talking about election security. They're just not. It's not and nothing's happening in Congress. Every week I'm going to say it because it's, I know just, you do. it's the biggest it's thing. Good for you. I, mean, I think you should. Nothing's happening. Election in secure, Congress nothing about is anything. happening. There's four bills. I looked them up. You're yeah, right. There's yeah, four. four bills waiting, and Mitch McConnell will not even hear them. Uh, democracy is broken. I'm broken. sorry to say. I know. And I don't know how, how we fix this. Heart. And the election is a very threatening experience because he could win. Not only because yeah. of his own machinations, but because of the Democratic machinations. Yeah. Somebody yeah. has got to stand up. So let me take your temperature, you guys. Who's the leader now of the pack? Is Biden still the one? You like, uh, you like Henry? Uh, not Henry, uh, Sanders? Um, uh, you I like, like Warren. Huh? I, I like Warren, and I didn't like her for a while because I you thought like she was Warren? a little too rabid, like, but uh, now uh, I Kamala I Harris? Her. 
Who do you like? Who's, who's I like surfacing? Her, but I really and like who's it. diminishing? I like Warren. I like, I like Warren. Okay. Warren. I think over time, Joe Biden's going to start losing some of his percentage, um, you know, right now. Was it helpful or not when he reversed his position on federal support of, uh, of uh, abortion? The Hyde Amendment. The Hyde, Hyde Amendment. Amendment. I, think, I think it was good for him to do that. I, I think, think he, he had I to. think he had enough time to get that out of the way so that as we go into 2020, it'll yeah. be long forgotten. Right. Yeah. So he said, let me just get it out of the way right now. Let me reverse myself. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, from a, uh, a strategy point of view, it was probably the right thing for him to do. It yeah. shows he's got yeah. baggage. Of course. Right. And, and he's got to get up current, you know. Uh, but, but uh, Warren is really getting up current. She has a, a new position to roll out every yeah. day. She's well, that's remarkable. what I like. She's got policy. She's, she's not just coming policies. out with. Cam yeah, yeah. She's Kamala like, Harris as well. I think is right behind her. She's or right got some good neck policies neck with her. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How would you like to see a, a woman president and a woman vice, vice president? president? Yes, please. That's not going to happen. No, I know it won't happen. But I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen in the White House? Well, what is he going to do? He's got to cope with, uh, you know, the tariffs. He's got to cope with Mexico. And don't forget, you guys, that it's coming soon. Um, it's, the, uh, it's the September crunch on the fiscal policy on the right. debt ceiling. That's correct. And he's going to have a fight about that. We're going to be in another crisis about that. All these things making it more and more complicated, less and less predictable, less and less efficient, less and less good government. I mean, the government is in chaos. I'm sorry. Lest we forget about Iran. Thank you. <laughs> the whole Sorry, Middle East is a tinderbox oh that could go off at any time. Any time. And Venezuela is in terrible shape. Yes. He hasn't made any progress no. with that. In fact, he's lost ground on that one. Well, he took away it, all their money. He know, funded them. Yeah, winning by intimidation doesn't work on a global no. scale. It simply doesn't. So, well, let's not forget the 60 senators, or excuse, excuse me, uh, 60 uh, House representatives that now are um, in line for right. impeachment. I think we'll start seeing those numbers rise. That's just my prediction. We'll, we'll see. Too. Yeah. Well, are, are we still uh, in, in agreement on the impeachment I issue? I am. I am. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But knowing that it wouldn't necessarily Inquiry. work in the Even Senate. Even if it doesn't go anywhere, I, I think it's important. I'm only in agreement if they could do it quickly and get it done quickly. Oh. If they go past fall, I'm, it's a bad strategy. They've got to clear the decks to get work what do you, done. What do you want them to do quickly? Basically impeach. Take the vote, make a statement, make a historical statement, and say, this is who you elected. And, and if it doesn't go through the Senate, it doesn't go through the Senate. The Democrats stood for something. They stood up. They stood up on their hind legs, yeah. and they, they made a definitive statement. And, okay, it's done. It's over. Move on. Because that's what Trump wants to do is drag this thing out and, and show the people that nothing's getting done except for vengeance after me. Right. And one thing I like is, uh, and this is the last point of our discussion because we're out of time. Um, is that some of the news media are systematically going through the Mueller report. Um, PBS, uh, the News Hour, every yeah, night. Finally. Finally, right, yeah. Finally. And they, 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 talk, they talk about one issue and what he, what he said about this and what he said about that. And it's, it, to some extent, it's really revelationary. It's very interesting. Um, you know, I mean, I wish somebody in Hawaii or maybe somebody in Think Tech would read the whole thing. You read the whole thing, yeah. You read the whole thing. I haven't read the whole thing yet. I'm still working on it. And, and, and comment on parts of it and what he's saying and how it, because that relates to the impeachment, doesn't it? Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think we've got to get to that. And I certainly agree with you. The, the, uh, the House uh, should, an inquiry could last forever. Yeah. But a vote on impeachment, that would be pretty, that would be pretty efficient. And then you go on to other things. You have to. Yeah, yeah. And if they keep on, uh, you know, passing legislation in the House that is positive and useful and constructive legislation for the country, and it all stalls at the Senate, that's worthwhile because it points out what's going on here. You hired us. We did all that we could per the Constitution to do what we were hired to do, and the other brand, the other House or the other Senate didn't do anything. We did our jobs, and they could put us, you know, they could shine a spotlight right. on that. They can't shine a spotlight on it if they keep dragging out this impeachment business. Yeah. Are we, are we not? Are we, are we not? Are we yeah, I, I was very concerned, by the way, uh, with this decision of a federal judge in Washington uh, uh, for the proposition that the House by itself did not have standing to question uh, Trump's uh, emergency declaration. There was a judge on the West yeah, Coast, uh, I think in San Francisco, who said he did have, the House did have standing, but in, in Washington, and let me, let me ask you uh, what, to guess 
Uh, was that judge uh, appointed Democratic or Republican? Republican. Yeah. Was that appointed by Trump? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was appointed in 2017. Oh. Um, so we have the, all these appointments that Trump is making are taking root now and supporting him in these bizarre things. So it, it, it opens a really big question as to whether um, the, you know, there is any, any remedy Okay, when, when uh, you know, he makes national emergency de declarations, is there any way to review that? Yeah. According to this judge, no, because the, the Congress is, is stuck. Uh, the Senate's never going to you know, take any relief on that, um, and the House can't get to court. And the, therefore, the, the courts, and, and I'll bet you five, that when it gets to the Supreme Court, they're, they're going to agree with the Trump judge in Washington. Well, it, you know, it goes to the point where you think the Supreme Court judges were unbiased and independent thinking and had the Constitution in mind when they, they render their decisions. But then you look at how they got in, and then you look at, you know, and I'm going to say it on the program, Barr and how he got in and how he has switched to be completely biased and completely, you know, the cheerleader for the President of the United States. I wouldn't think I'd see this in my lifetime, but I have. Well, actually, I probably saw it during the Nixon time. Um, you know, the AG for Nixon was pretty much a cheerleader for Nixon. And, uh, but, you know, it's disappointing to see that. You, yes. you wonder, where is our democracy if you can buy your judges and, and get them installed and they'll vote obediently for you as a point of loyalty? Um, that strikes against the, the whole principle of democracy in my life. Yeah, and, and the one institution that you need to rely on with all this chaos is, is the, the rule media. Of law. Is the media. Is the media. Yeah. And uh, he attacked uh, CNN this week. Um, he said uh, that we should all boycott CNN. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, a, it was a failing news organization anyway. Um, it, it's part of the ongoing war against the press that hasn't stopped. Yeah. And in funny ways, he's, he's having an effect on that. Yes. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm so depressed we have to stop. You keep getting depressed after these shows. I'm sorry. You we'll get well, up for the next one next <laughs> okay. week. Tim Apicello, <laughs> Cynthia Sinclair, thank you so much, you Thank guys. you, Jay. Thank you. Aloha. Trump week. Aloha. Trump week. <laughs> Appreciate it.